If you are a Christian parent who is looking for a way to facilitate conversation with your preteen or your teenager about friendships, about the changes going on in their bodies, about dating, then I want to tell you about Passport to Purity. My daughter and I just recently did a weekend, followed the Passport to Purity program, and I have a lot to say about it. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is the Passport to Purity program, what does it include, how to prepare for your weekend away with your child, what happened when I experienced it with my daughter, and then if I was going to do this again with another child, what would I change? What would I do differently? My name is Rachel and I am a homeschooling mom to three kiddos age 17, 14, and 10. And I have been at this almost a decade. On this channel, I talk about all things homeschooling, lots of parenting topics, especially for teens, and all from a biblical perspective. So what is Passport to Purity? I did a video last year, I think, maybe it was a year before, about how we give our kids the talk I'm fortunate enough that I have um, a program in my area where we were able to take our children there around the age 11, fifth grade, and they, they were there with other students. It was like a little mini seminar that Christian doctors and Christian nurses gave them. So we introduced our kids to that in that way in fifth grade. And many of you have reached out to me saying, how do I find out if there's something like that in my area, or, or I really love the way that you did that, do you recommend anything else? And I told you that in the materials and the resources that our little seminar gave us, that Passport to Purity was mentioned. And I had bought it because they had encouraged the parents to continue the conversation, to not just leave it with that little one day, one or two day seminar. And so I had bought Passport to Purity. This program, this is the book, the travel journal that comes with it for my daughter this covers so much more than just the talk this is an excellent resource so first of all you can purchase passport to purity from amazon i'll link it below i think you can also get it from christianbooks.com this was created in 1999 and has been updated several times the edition that i have says updated in 2022. you can order it in several different ways like I think you can probably get it without getting this book. I thought this book was really nice. It's color, it helps them follow along. It has some questions and answers section. You can get it however many copies that you want. And it also comes with audio files. I got the one that was just downloadable MP3s, but you could also order with CDs if you are still a CD listener. But they also give you access to downloadables. So like, for example, if I do this with another child, I don't have to buy this book again if I, if I don't want to. I was able to print off the travel journal for my own. I mean, the printing it off is not going to be obviously as good of quality as buying the book but it still has everything here. Another cool thing about this book is it has 30 days of devotionals for your kids specific to many of these topics. So this really acts as a keepsake for your child to remind them of the things that, that you and they talked about, but then there's more in the back that they can have private time with God when they are having more questions or struggling with these things. So I really loved that, a little devotional specific to this. There's notebook pages in the back, so they can add additional thoughts here. There's lots of pages. So even the note that my husband and I wrote, there's probably 15 notebook pages here in the back. Plenty of room to add some more if they wanna do their own Bible study or they wanna write additional thoughts or make it a diary or something, there's room in there for it. It also comes with like this laminated card for checklist for getting ready for the weekend and packing and everything. It comes with a QR code. I can't show it to you here, but the QR code is how you access, if you buy the MP3s, how you access all of the downloadables in the MP3 audio files. One of the downloadables was like a bunch of pages to help you prep for the weekend. So it was a guide for the parents for what it is, what you need to do to plan your weekend, how to budget, how to schedule, and the activities that you might need to do some prep work beforehand. So it was very handy. They also, in the MP3 files, for, for parents. I think it was an explanation for what to expect. I didn't listen to it. I'm not sure why I didn't listen to it, but I didn't. So this actually is fairly sufficient for, like I felt prepared once I got there. The only thing I didn't understand 
I think, was that I, re I really wouldn't be doing most of the facilitating, which was fine for me. So that was a pleasant surprise, and I will get more into that in a bit. Here's what Passport to Purity is going to cover. It has five sessions, and when I say sessions, I mean they are over an hour long. So session one says beginning the journey. So this is about like why you should partner with your parents on many of these things. Don't be afraid to talk to them that, you know, like if you're walking, they give so many great illustrations, but one of them was like, if you're walking through a forest trail in the dark, you may not be able to see the traps that are there, but your parents have been down that road before your parents know, so they can safely lead you through the trail to avoid these traps. So the very intro is really about the why you want to partner with your parents. The second session, running with the herd, that is about friendships and peer pressure and how your friends can influence you. Just all kinds of strategies for not falling susceptible to that. It is great for any teenager. I mean, we're not even into the sex and relationships yet. The third session is called Ready for an Upgrade. This parents is where if you haven't had the talk yet, this is where it's at. Now, it's going to explain puberty and the changes in your body. They have specific sessions just for girls and then specific audio just for boys. So they do talk about different things depending on which child you're doing this with. They will explain some of the changes in the opposite sex, but in an appropriate way. And they will also explain the mechanics of sex. So depending on the age of your child and what you think is appropriate. This one might be a good one for you to listen to ahead of time to know what you're getting into. I fast forwarded through most of it because my daughter already knew, you know, she's 14 years old. This is designed for preteen. I forgot to say that. This is designed for 11, 12 years old before they hit puberty. And I would definitely say if you have children who are going to school, that maybe that would be an appropriate time because they seem to be exposed to things a lot sooner in school. But for homeschoolers, I am not convinced that 11 and 12 years old is the best time for this, maybe for the first three sessions, right? Because you might want help doing the talk in puberty with an 11 or 12 year old. But the last two sessions, I feel like you can talk about with an 11 and 12 year old, but I felt like it was really more valuable for my daughter being 14, 14 and a half, almost 15, to have these conversations now. So the last two sessions are about purity and dating. So session four, okay, I can show you this one. So session four, because this opens up, session four is about purity. It's about all the things that purity isn't just about virginity. There are a lot of things that happen outside of actual sex that are dangerous. So anyway, it talks about all those things. And this like little thing was a, a story they told about a castle and there's an edge of a cliff here and how close do you want to get to the edge and how close do you think you can get to the edge without falling over anyway i don't want to give away the story because it was really really good but we didn't realize that this flap opened <laughs> which is why we didn't do this activity correctly but you're supposed to rank certain things from like the most innocent thing you could do with the opposite sex to the most dangerous because what it encourages you to do they made a really good point saying you want to set these boundaries now before you're even close to these decisions because when you're in that moment or when you might be emotionally involved with somebody is not the time to start thinking about what your boundaries are because you're not thinking clearly and so those were really good conversations for us to have and then the last session about dating now they didn't say don't date or here's the appropriate age to date they leave that up to the parents but they make a lot of really good points about even just having exclusive conversations with the opposite sex, being connected in any sort of exclusive way, no matter even what types of things you might be doing physically, just connecting mentally with somebody and how that can affect your future relationships and everything. I mean, this program is something that I wish I would have had when I was a teenager. I wish that I would have had all of these conversations because I feel like most of what I learned about any of these things was through friends and through what the health classes in school taught me. And of course, they're not coming from a Christian perspective. They're not coming from the uh, traps that some of these things could lead to. And so I 
feel like this goes into a lot more of the why it's dangerous rather than just saying, don't do these things because it doesn't honor the Lord. It does talk about this, but it also talks about so much more. And so this was the thing that I realized when we started the weekend, when I started going through the audio messages, I realized I don't have to facilitate this at all. This is a full out like seminar. The audio messages are facilitating like for one session, there may be five different parts. So for one session, there may be five different audio parts because they will have you pause and do an activity or pause and discuss with your parents or pause and fill out something in the book. So some sessions were 40 minutes, some were five minutes, some were 15 minutes. It just depends on the points that they were making. So I really, really appreciated that I didn't have to facilitate somebody else's vision because I'm really not good about that. That was the one thing I was worried about, which is why I printed out my own book because I actually thought I was going to have to go through the book and facilitate it. But that was not the case. It was like attending a seminar workshop and then they prompted the parents, okay, now do the activities we talked about or which I will talk about here in a minute and have this conversation with your child. And it was actually prompting so many conversations. Like in the middle of an audio me message, I would pause and add things for my daughter saying, you know, you've already encountered something like this. So I would take something from her personal life with her friendships or with some situation that she's already encountered and make it applicable to her and talk through it. So for that reason, our sessions took longer than in some cases than the hour and a half that they had recommended. Man, as I was listening to this too, because I have a 17 year old son and, you know, we didn't do passport to purity with him, but I told my husband, I feel like he should do this with my son. And maybe some of the things he's going to be way past, like, you know, the puberty talk and all that, but the dating, the relationships, the friendships, I mean, there's so much here that is so good to facilitate all kinds of conversations between you and your teenager. So the next thing I want to talk about is the prep work, the upfront work that you need to do in order to prepare for this weekend. I already mentioned that they really want you to get away. And that was so important. I I mean, you could do this at home, but I think it would be distracting being at home. One of the things about being away in a hotel was my daughter knew she had me, she had my full attention, and she didn't have to worry about a sibling hopping in or, oh, we've got to stop our train of thought because we've got to fix dinner or we've got to do this chore or we've got to run to this lesson. Like she knew we were getting away. This was a concentrated weekend for her and I to do this. So if you didn't want to do a hotel, which you don't have to, I think I saw a YouTube video because I was doing my research and there's not a lot on YouTube about this, which is why I'm making this video. But a mom and her young daughter went away to like a little cabin. So they didn't do the hotel route. They rented a little cabin and the mom brought food with her to prepare. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can do it depending on your budget. They definitely say choose your budget wisely. I chose a hotel that was in very close proximity to a lot of food places because I knew that I did not want to waste time driving to find food. So I feel like our hotel was like very close to a Costco, to a Target, to Chipotle, to Jason's Deli, to Subway, to Chick-fil-A. It's like all those places were right there next to us. And we had all the choices in the world for where we wanted to eat. And most of the time we didn't eat in the restaurant. Like my daughter wanted to get our food and we went back to the hotel and we did more of our session work or we just hung out in the hotel. They tell you to prepare for an hour to an hour and a half to complete each, se each session. So there's five of them. I planned our weekend with a little extra time than what they had suggested because they suggest that, for example, you leave on a Friday afternoon and you arrive at your hotel and you explain the weekend to your child, you go out to dinner, and then you come back and you do a couple sessions. And then the next day, you do two sessions in the morning, and then you plan an activity, like a bonding type activity. And then when you come back, you do the fifth session, and then you go to dinner and celebrate and head home. I always plan for more fluff time because things never go according to plan, so I planned to leave earlier. And we arrived at the hotel about one o'clock and we actually were able to get in. And then I also planned two nights in a hotel. So we left on a Thursday afternoon, stayed Thursday night, Friday night in the hotel and checked out on Saturday. I gave the extra time because I thought if we didn't get through the five sessions before Friday night, that I would have Saturday morning to finish. And that's kind of what I, what I did. We definitely did not have 
a lot of free time. This was our weekend, which was perfectly fine. It led to so many conversations. Another thing that you have to plan for in the weekend is they really want you to plan a very special activity, something between you and your child that will be a fun time, not necessarily talking about this. And they give you all kinds of ideas. I highlighted the ones that I was interested in and essentially I ended up choosing an escape room because my daughter has always wanted to do an escape room. So that's the activity that I planned and I planned it into our schedule. Another thing that you have to do ahead of time is purchase a special gift. Now this technically would be optional. They suggest purchasing a special gift for your child to commemorate the weekend. And again, they give you all kinds of ideas there. I purchased my daughter a necklace. The stones on it represent love because each stone, the first stone started with an L, the second stone was an opal. So O, oh, I, I don't remember the the V and the E was an emerald. So anyway, she's got a little necklace with these stones that represent love. And so I told her whenever she wears that necklace to think about this weekend and the things that we talked about. They give you a planning checklist, which I definitely suggest going through this because as you can see, I needed to add in things for how my brain worked to keep track of this and the projects that I needed to prep for because they have the project prep checklist here in the back, but that's not how my brain works. My brain says, no, in this to-do before you leave for the weekend, you need to gather all the things for these activities. But overall, their notes to the parents on how to prepare for this weekend are very good. They have thought about pretty much everything. The other thing you need to do to prep is in the journal, in the back of the journal is a bunch of notebook pages, and they want both parents to write a note to your child about and they they give you parameters again <laughs> what types of things to put in your note if you're not sure so like you're excited for this weekend why you're doing this weekend what are the things that you admire most in your child you know the qualities that you appreciate about your child and so on and so forth and so my husband and i took time and wrote a very thoughtful note to put in the back of this journal and then they tell you in preparation to also pray for your teen and they give you all kinds of ideas for the things that you should pray for your teen and for this weekend. They give scenarios for what kinds of things you should share about your life because I know that a lot of parents always have that dilemma. Should you share every stumbling that you had in this area or should you not or you know how to handle that? So they give you suggestions for that. And then the last few pages on the prep are the activities that you're going to do. So I showed you there's a list of things that you need to purchase for the activities. And then here's the instructions. So during the audio files, when they say pause and do activity one with your parent, I had this in my binder and I sometimes it tells you exactly what to say and how to run the activity. So I did need this part for sure for the weekend to know exactly what to do for the activity and how to facilitate it. So besides discussion, the activities were really the only other thing I facilitated. Okay, so what happened with me and my daughter? We drove about an hour to our hotel. So we, we got away, so it was special, but it wasn't too far away because I didn't want to spend the entire day driving and then I didn't want to spend all Saturday driving back because my husband did actually suggest that I go to this fancy place that was like three and a half hours away. And I just thought, no, I don't want to drive. We started our journey driving to the nearest Starbucks where I got her her favorite special drink and that's where I told her what the weekend was because she actually thought we were going to a conference. And I was like, no, this is not a conference. It's just between you and me. And I presented her with this journal and a pen. And I said, we're going to start our session in the drive. On our way to Starbucks, I do have to say this as well. I put on worship music and normally my daughter is distracted with either she's sleeping or she wants to play on my phone while we're driving. but there was a different spirit starting out because I had prayed about this. My husband prayed for us before we left. We did Bible study with the whole family before we left. So there was a different spirit that she knew this weekend was going to be different. And so she was kind of more awake for it. And we were singing in the car, which doesn't happen very often. We were singing worship songs together. And so I just knew it was going to be a great weekend. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And then we went to Starbucks. I gave her the book, told her what the weekend was going to be about. And at that point, we were about halfway to our destination. So I had only a half an hour to start these sessions. 
that's one of the things that I would change is now looking back, I realize I could have accomplished more in the car session wise, but maybe if I had listened to that parent audio, I would have gotten a better idea for that because a lot of it is just listening and she was following along in the car, filling in, there were blank spaces. So like as they were talking, you can fill in the blank spaces and follow along. So she was definitely able to do that in the car. On the car ride there, she was just already opening up to me about things happening in her life with some of her friends. So we were able to talk through a lot of that without the audio again. It prompted me to bring up that Vodi sermon on forgiveness that I mentioned in this video here. And we listened to that on Saturday on the way home. So, so many conversations already starting. It's amazing when your child knows they have your full attention and there's no distractions around them, what they might talk to you about. So here's the thing that pleasantly surprised me off the bat when we started the audio sessions and I realized, oh, I don't even have to facilitate this weekend. This is wonderful. Like I thought the audio sessions was going to prompt me for what scriptures to go to or, or what to do and what to facilitate. But like I said, it, it's a husband and wife who created this. And so they kind of flip flop on who's talking. But the other really cool thing in all of the audio parts was they also interviewed kids or they did polls, P-O-L-L-S, of kids, like where they asked, what is this? What is that? So you could see how kids think differently. The father was also a Sunday school teacher and had facilitated live these sorts of sessions. And so he would describe things that he did with his Sunday school class and things that they said or things that happened. Those were really interesting. Lots of metaphorical illustrations that were so good, including the activities, which I will describe here in a minute. Even young adults come on and share their stories, which I thought was really impactful. They just had a lot of different points of views come in. And even though we personally don't know these people, hearing their stories and some of the struggles that they had as teenagers, like maybe not understanding why their parents had such tight reins on them, but appreciating it more when they were adults, or they were kids who didn't understand the why behind some of these things. And so they fell into some traps and the deep, deep regret that they had and the redemption that came later. Like there was so many good stories. I don't know how else to explain this to you guys, except the audio messages were above and beyond what I expected. And I, when I was sitting there listening to him thinking, I just think every parent, every Christian parent who wants to raise their child conservatively in a culture that is, is trying to expose them to everything under the sun, that this program will be such an encouragement to you and maybe to your child as they don't understand about fighting the culture and swimming against the tide and just how hard it's going to be. My 14 year old kept telling me, you know, she's got a little bit of self-confidence in her that she'll never succumb to peer pressure or, you know, that she's more stubborn than to fall for all of this. And I keep telling her, you just 14 years old, you don't even know the pressures yet. They're just getting started. And that's what, as these sessions kept going along, kept progressing, and trying to explain. So it's just, it's so good, you guys. Okay, so there were five activities that you had prepared for. The first one is a jigsaw puzzle. You give your child a puzzle with, and you don't, you forget the box top, so they don't even know what they're supposed to create. And then you have a puzzle, which of course you have the box top, and you guys have a race to see who can complete their puzzle first. So that's the illustration of, you might have all the pieces, but you don't understand how they fit together, how they're supposed to fit together into the big picture, but your parent does. They've seen the big picture, they understand the big picture, and you need this map. So that's kind of the illustration there. I have some lesson learned with the puzzle, but I will wait. I'll wait to talk about that when I talk about what I would do different. And the second activity that we did involved Play-Doh, and you take one color and create a person, you take another color and create a person, and then the third color and create a person. And it represents you and different kinds of friends, a good friend and a bad friend. And you eventually mix the Play-Doh together 
with the good friend and you see how the good friend enhances you and makes you into a new person because then you're supposed to create with the two mixed colors together a new person because you're forever changed your friendships even will change you forever but then when you mix the bad friend in it was a pretty orange and now it's getting gross and ugly you know we, what happens with play-doh because they want you to get red yellow and blue so when you mix all three together it turns a dirty brown right and so it's pointing out how the bad friend also influences you and turns you into something that's not good i have lessons learned with play-doh too but that one was super fun my daughter really got into creating the first person <laughs> The third session, which is the activity that they used when you're talking about puberty and the changes going on in your body, and, and it specifically talks about virginity and what virginity is, and so it has, you have a match, and you light the match, and you blow it out, and then you tell your child, I'll light it again, and of course the child's going to say, I can't. You can only light it once. And it'll never be relit again. And then, but you also, you take a new match and you dip it in water. And this is the protection of Jesus. And then when that you try to light that match after being dipped in water, it's not going to light because it's protection. But, you know, eventually the water dries and you can light it. Just an illustration about how you can only give away your virginity one time and protecting it as the precious gift that it is. The fourth session involved a balloon filled with water. They suggest specific kinds of balloons that you can put a pin in and just have it leak a little bit of water. So I got latex balloons and I did not fill the balloon up with a lot of water, just enough so that I could poke it and water would stream out. And this is about that um, purity isn't just about virginity. Purity is all kinds of things because purity is really about your heart, right? And it's really about selfishness and desiring something else more than desiring God. That's really what purity is. And so even just a little bit, maybe it's not your virginity, but it's a little bit here. And we talked about those things and it shows how it slowly leaks, leaks out of the balloon. And then that's what you're going to present to your husband later, a, def a deflated balloon. Here, I saved this for you. Now, let me make this clear because I know there's been, I've heard a lot of talk lately about the purity culture of the 90s and how destructive that may have been because I wasn't part of it, but they made young Christians feel like if they did make mistakes or they did lose their virginity, that they were ruined forever. That is not what this program is going to teach either. It teaches redemption, that it's never too late to make the right decision. And it emphasizes that. So even if your child, maybe you have a an older teenager who already has made some of these mistakes and it hits home and they feel like what they've already you know given away a little piece of their heart to somebody else so now they're impure it's never too late to make the right decision now and so they talk about that and they actually one of the testimonials on one of the audios is a young woman who gives her story about that because she even went through how she was ruined forever and how uh, different christian friends in her life came alongside and helped her and see that there is redemption and she is still valuable. And then the fifth activity is construction paper and you take two colors. So you have six pieces of construction paper, three of one color, three of another color, and you take two of the different color, one's your child and one is a member of the opposite sex. And you show how the two pieces of paper, you can rub them together and they're unchanged. And they talk about how you can be friends with the opposite sex, you can go, you can do things in groups. There are ways, even if you're, even if you might be attracted to them, right? You can interact with them in a way that is not going to change you forever. Okay. So that's the first illustration. Then you take two more pieces of paper and I've got a bottle of glue. It talks about how when you start forming exclusive bonds, maybe we're not even talking about kissing or beyond kissing. Maybe we're talking about exclusive text messages and then you dab the paper with some glue. You're talking about private phone conversations. You're dabbing the paper with glue. All kinds of personal interactions that you're only exchanging with this one person. But when you're dabbing the paper with glue and then you stick the paper together, even though you might be able to rip them apart and them not be fastened together forever because maybe you end the relationship before it goes too far, before it goes too far along. But the point is, is your, your paper is still not the same. Because when you start forming those 
emotional attachments to one person. That's what it's talking about is forming emotional attachments. And this definitely, I think, hit home with my daughter because it's one of those things that I struggle to explain to her why she shouldn't be having private conversations with boys or even why we are not okay with dating when you're in high school. There's no reason for you to start forming exclusive attachments with one person and tempting yourself, which the other four sessions are going to talk about. Because as we all who are married know, when you start forming exclusive attachments and your emotions become involved, when your emotions become involved and your body starts becoming involved, like I kept explaining to my daughter all weekend, it's like an itch that you just want to scratch. <laughs> Creating those sorts of boundaries to protect yourself is really what it is until you are ready to actually pursue a relationship towards marriage. For my husband and I, we just don't see how you could be ready to pursue a relationship towards marriage when you're 15 years old or when you're 16 years old. You are not ready. You're too young and it's too tempting. And the culture today is very different than the culture of 50 or 60 years ago. I, I just feel like you're opening up a lot of doors to temptation. So it was good to have those conversations with my daughter. And then I kind of got off a sidetrack there. The last two pieces of paper I glued together last week and they were attached. And this was when you actually have sex with somebody and gave it to my daughter and said, now try to rip, try to pull these apart. And when she pulled them apart, obviously pieces were ripping off of each one. So talked about how you will forever be changed when you do that because of the culture, again, on TV and movies, try to portray sex as if it's just a physical act. There's no strings. You can do no strings attached and you can somehow separate yourself mentally and emotionally from the physical act. And we know that is absolutely a lie of Satan. And when you come together with somebody in that way, you will forever be changed. And the other thing I was always telling my daughter, not just sex, but kissing, even any sort of physical act that you know, it teeters on the lines of adultery. When the Bible, well, because Jesus himself said, if you lust for somebody in your mind, you've already committed adultery. Obviously, if you're kissing somebody who's not, you're not married to, you're lusting for them, right? But our culture doesn't teach us that. And we don't realize how we've been influenced in that way. And when my husband and I started dating, he told me a story of somebody who he had dated before me who refused to kiss him. She told him, because I don't know if we're going to get married and I might be kissing somebody else's husband. And he always told me that how that changed his view about intimacy in a dating relationship. He's never forgotten it. I mean, he's already told my kids that and she was right. If she would have kissed him, she would have been kissing my husband. Jesus defines adultery even stricter than just somebody else's spouse. But those were all such good relation, good conversations to have to explain to my daughter also. So many of these things, if you do with a boyfriend and then it doesn't work out and then you have another boyfriend and you do things and it doesn't work out and then you have another boyfriend. I mean, all the, the mental baggage, all the comparisons, right? Oh, well, you kiss differently than this boyfriend kissed or, or whatever. I told her, those are things that you do not want to bring into your marriage because those memories do not go away. And I was telling her, you know, this is why my husband and I are have been having these conversations with our kids for years, strongly asking them to allow us to be part of the whole process whenever it's time to start pursuing a relationship with somebody, to allow us to be involved because we will be looking out to protect them. We will looking out for their best interest and we will want to protect them from creating exclusive bonds that cannot be carried out to marriage. So for example, before you even start dating, is this the kind of person that you could marry? Do you have the same beliefs? I mean, you if you if you had somebody ask you out on a date today and you wanted to go through all of your theology and work that out first, they would probably think, most guys would think you're crazy. Like, why do we have to work through this now? Well, because it's not really safe for you to start getting emotionally attached to somebody who believes very differently from you, right? Like I told my kids, my first boyfriend I ever dated, I actually had hesitations about dating him. Um, it was actually my parents who gave me the go ahead to go ahead, even though 
I didn't know if he was saved. I didn't know like what exactly he believed, but my parents were raised in a different era in the 60s. They have different views on it now, but they actually gave me the go-ahead and creating those emotional attachments. And then I ended up breaking up with him. Why? Because he wasn't saved and because we didn't have the same theological views. And I knew that I wasn't going to marry somebody who I didn't believe like. And I was telling my kids that created a lot of scars. Anyway, off my soapbox, just giving you ideas for if you have the same convictions and some ideas for things you could talk about with your child. Uh, things that I would do differently. So I already mentioned for session one, I would start it immediately. I think that maybe you could get 45 minutes to an hour done on your drive to the destination before it even prompts you to do the activity. So I wouldn't wait. I would get as much done in the car as you can, because like I said, this schedule, these sessions, the conversations, it's an intense weekend. It's good, but it's very intense. I think I was falling asleep every night at nine, nine o'clock. I was just drained in a good way though, from the emotional connection and bonding I was having with my daughter. Another thing I was, I would change is I think when I was doing my research on this, I can't remember if this was a YouTube video I watched or a blog where somebody had talked about putting all the activities in gift bags with cute little tissue paper and all that as if it's like a present for your child to unwrap. I would not waste my time doing that. I would follow the instructions that they tell, tell me here, which is to just put those activities in a brown paper bag because it was never a something that I just let my daughter open because I had to facilitate it. So like I had to fill up the balloon with water ahead of time. I had to um, give her two pieces of the construction paper at a time. It wasn't just like she opened it, saw all the pieces, and then I started facilitating. I actually just had to give her a piece at a time. So don't try to make it fancy and cute. Just, just separate your activities into the bundles that they are. Your child, you're going to be handing them to your child. With the puzzle, I gave my daughter a 100 piece puzzle. And then the puzzle that I had was a 24 piece child's puzzle. If I had to do this over because she still was able to put the puzzle together without the box top, it probably would have made the point even further if I had given her a 500 piece puzzle. So I think when I do this with my younger daughter, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give her a really complex puzzle to try to put together where there's no way she can even attempt to start it. For the Play-Doh, I could not find the little, the little super tiny Play-Doh thing, so I had to buy the big one. But to make your point, you do not have to ruin all your Play-Doh. <laughs> so if you have younger children that would like to play with the Play-Doh later, you could give and you have to buy the big one. The point is, is to be able to mix the colors we ended up mixing all three things of Play-Doh. So I basically turned three very beautiful colors into one huge clump of brown. That's not necessary. You can just make the point with a small part of the Play-Doh. And then for the leaky balloon, it tells you to have a gallon of water. So when I was buying all my supplies for the weekend, I bought snacks, I was buying the stuff for the activities to prep for it. I literally bought a gallon of water. I did not need to bring a gallon of water with me to the hotel, although it did end up, I bought spring water. So it did come in handy because we were able to keep filling our filling our Stanleys with some good water rather than having to use, you know, sink water or restaurant water. But I didn't need a gallon of water to fill the balloon. I just took it to the bathroom sink and filled the balloon to about till the balloon was about that big. The balloon blown up would be one of those huge balloons. I only filled it that much because I wanted to make sure there was still a lot of rubber there and then I wasn't going to pop it the first time I pricked it with a needle because it did end up popping. Since we were doing it in our hotel room, I also held the balloon over the ice bucket because I, one, I needed something for the balloon to leak into. And second, I thought if it pops, I need it to not make a mess in my hotel room. And it ended up popping. And luckily it all popped in the ice bucket. And I also, when I packed, I packed cards. I packed a few games because I thought my daughter and I are in a hotel room rather than watching TV. Maybe we would want to play a game. If I had to do this over again, I would not even bother packing that extra stuff. Cause like I said, this was intense and we'd never turned on the TV except for when it was time to go to bed. So the TV, basically I fell asleep every night with the TV on. She stayed up a little bit later. I mean, I was just zapped at the end of the day. So if you follow the schedule that I did, you're not going to have a whole lot of extra time for activity, which is fine. Cause like I said, we, we worked out. So I guess maybe if you don't go to the gym, maybe you'll have time to just play a game or read a book. I brought books for myself to read. There was no time. <laughs> there was no time for extra activity. It was do these sessions, get your food in, get your rest because the next day you got a lot more to do. Even if you don't do it for a tween, there are so many benefits you can get out of it. As long as you have a child at home, I highly recommend this. If you have any more questions, let me know below. 
And until next time, bye.